The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. This information board details the coordination of the companies involved in the translation process. In January 1604 at the Hampton Court Conference, Puritan John Reynolds moved His Majesty that they might be a new translation of the Bible. King James professed, I could never yet see a Bible well translated in English. He wished that there should be one uniform translation. Later in 1604, King James I of England had 54 of the most learned men of the land appointed for the purpose of translating the scriptures into one uniform translation to be read in both the churches and the homes. The translators were divided into three groups, each consisting of two companies as shown, which met at Westminster, Oxford, and Cambridge. Every company was given a specific portion of scripture to translate along with 15 rules to be observed in the process. Each translator worked individually on an assigned chapter or small section of scripture. He then submitted his work to the other members of his company for review and necessary revision. Each company, as soon as it had collectively completed its rendering of any one book, sent a copy of it to each of the other five companies for review. Then at a general meeting of the chief delegates of each company, a final review of the translation was made. This process guaranteed that every word of the Bible was closely checked and cross-checked at least 14 times. After seven years, 47 of those men saw that goal accomplished. In 1611, that one uniform translation was published. It's been called the Authorized Version, the King James Version, the King James Bible, and the Holy Bible. But to millions of Christians over hundreds of years, it was simply known as the Bible. On exhibit are four genuine King James leaves, a 1612 first quarto edition, that's a personal size, a 1612 first edition of a single column New Testament, also two pulpit size 1613 leaves. Also on display is a 1611 Mayflower facsimile. This special Mayflower edition commemorates the 400th anniversary of the Mayflower ship's arrival to the New World on November 11th, 1620. While many people associate the Geneva Bible with the Mayflower's arrival, bringing the Christian pilgrims to America shore, it's a fact accepted that both the Geneva Bible and the King James Bible were present among those earliest Bibles brought to America. There is also information on John Alden, who was one of the first people to bring a King James Bible to America. Maybe you have been taught that the Geneva Bible was the only Bible that came over on the Mayflower, but the early pilgrims had another version available to them. According to the Pilgrim Hall Museum in Plymouth, Massachusetts, there are four surviving Bibles from the era. Experts agree that at least two of these Bibles were brought over on the Mayflower in 1620. One, a Geneva Bible, belonged to William Bradford, who would become governor of the Plymouth Colony. The other was a newly printed 1620 edition of the King James Bible, which belonged to John Alden. Though Alden became a prominent member of the Plymouth Colony, he wasn't originally a member of the Pilgrims, but rather the ship's carpenter. He was a cooper or barrel maker hired by the pilgrims at Southampton where the Mayflower was docked before beginning her transatlantic voyage. Alden may also have been a man of faith choosing to carry a Bible with him as he journeyed to the New World. Upon arrival on the shores of Massachusetts in November 1620, Alden opted to stay with the pilgrims and had it added his signature to the Mayflower compact signed on November 21, 1620. John Alden was the last survivor of the Mayflower Compact. He died on September 12, 1687. The first colonists probably brought Geneva or Bishop's Bibles. The Roanoke County was settled long before the King James Version was written, and the colonists had disappeared by 1590. Jamestown was founded in 1607, again too early for the KJV. Alden's 1620 Bible may have been the first copy of the King James Version on American soil. Over the next few decades, the King James Bible became the preeminent Bible in the colonies as it did in England. This little colony began with a Christian home built, built around the Bible, with a Christian church preaching the infallible Word of God, and a school whose textbook was the King James Bible.